Hello, my name is Ian McCall, and this is another from the Demoscopy Made Simple website uh, series of videos on Spitz Nevis. Now, the Spitz Nevis is a very distinctive uh, Nevis. It grows rapidly. It's either pink color or it's black, and it occurs in younger children between the ages of 2 and 12. And hence, it attracts the parents' attention. Uh, these children are usually brought to see you quite quickly because people are worried about a rapidly growing dark or pink nevis. Now Spitz nevis is named after Sophie Spitz and she first described the histological features of this nevis in 1948. Now as I've said, it presents in two forms, either as a rapidly growing pink papular nodule or as a black papular nodule. And it's in a young person between the ages of 2 and 12. Now, if you get a rapidly growing pink or dark lesion uh, in someone outside these age ranges, then consider that the lesion may be a melanoma. When you look at Spitz nevi dermatoscopically, the pink ones present, uh, they, well, they look as if they've just made up of dot vessels. The darker ones will have clods peripheral, sometimes clods central. Occasionally, even, they'll just be lines retic plus clods and sometimes just black structureless. And a reed nevis is uh, regarded as a variant of a spitz nevis. Now, let's have a little look at an archetypical spitz nevis. <coughs> this is one here. Let's make this just a touch bigger. Here's a rapidly growing pigmented lesion in a younger person. Here is the dermatoscopic view, black structureless in the center, a lot of clods peripheral. Most of the clods peripheral are much the same size, much the same color. If you had only got a few clods in one area and it was an older person, then you'd be looking at the lesion carefully uh, to see that it wasn't a melanoma. Here we even felt there were some pseudopods um, associated with the, the pigment uh, mass. So peripheral globules, similar size all the way around radially, occasionally with some pseudopods, then you've got a spitz nevis. Now, some other examples. We've got a lot to get through today. This is one that came to my room recently pigmented lesion on the knee of a 14-month-old boy. When you have a look with the dermatoscope, and again, you've got these peripheral clods, and in some of this area, you've also got some lesions that are suggestive of Lyme's radial peripheral. Let's see if we can make that just a touch bigger. Now, when you examine this again, most of them are, in fact, just clods radial. They do vary, though, a little bit in size in this one. Um, but in a 14-month-old, uh, this is a spitz nevis. You can see the density of pigment here precludes you from seeing some of the other clods, but there are clods, I'm sure, underlying this uh, dense mass of pigment here. This is another one, but it shows an even denser mass of pigment here. It is a black nodule. And when you look, you can hardly see the uh, peripheral clods in this. You've just got this homogeneous dark center. So it's virtually presenting as a, a black structureless uh, nevus. Remember, though, that Spitz nevi, the same way as other uh, banal nevi, they evolve with time, they change with time. And Spitz nevi probably change a bit quicker than uh, most other nevi. This was the lesion on the shoulder of a seven-year-old girl. Now, this was when she presented to me originally. This was her initial picture. A lot of uh, clods radial, dense, homogeneous, black, structureless area here. So, two years later, when she was reviewed, the lesion had changed to this. Look this. 
all your peripheral clods have virtually gone. It's lightened up in the center here. You can see these other clods in the center. And if you look carefully up here, there's the start of Lyme's reticula. So this is evolving from a globular a clod like nevus into a Lyme's reticular nevus. So Spitz nevi evolve, they change. So if you're thinking of monitoring a spitz nevus and thinking that if it does change, uh, that's uh, an indication that uh, this may be a melanoma, I've got to excise this, then that's not the case at all. Spitz nevi evolve as do ordinary nevi. Now this is a picture, this was a 17-year-old, tendency to get big moles. And when you looked at this one, here you've got lines reticular in the center, and you've got radial blind clods. Now this picture uh, can equally be seen in just a banal uh, growing nevus, but this one was reported histologically as a spitz nevus. It was excised because it had been rapidly growing. There isn't really a lot there to make you want to excise this. Your radial brown clods are all much the same size. It's a symmetrical lesion. Um, one wouldn't regard that as being too suspicious. And I'm sure it could have been safely left. Now remember that Spitz nevi can sometimes present as uh, in this way, with your clods distributed throughout the, uh, the lesion. Um, this was the lesion clinically. One color, one pattern equals benign. This was uh, excised and it was reported as a spitz-like nevus histologically. Again, it was a bit atypical in terms of its size relative to uh, other uh, lesions elsewhere, but it's still one pattern, one color, benign. It could have been left. Remember, though, that uh, the spitz nevi that tend to get excised are often the dark ones because they always look more alarming. But there are spitz nevi that present just as pink uh, papules and nodules, often in uh, younger children. And they can be pink yellow like this, but sometimes they'll have a little bit of pigment associated with them. And when you look at them, they're pink because they're made up of dot vessels. That's why they're pink. But in a lesion like this, in an older person with uh, eccentric hyperpigmentation, then with dot vessels in this, you've got to excise it to uh, exclude melanoma. But this was a spitz nevus. Here's another one that we had. A 17-year-old boy uh, with a pink lesion that had grown fairly rapidly on his lower legs. His GP had done an incisional biopsy into this. That's what you're seeing there. And it was reported as a spitz nevus, but the rest of it all had to be excised. In the end, it was all reported as spitz nevus. Here you've got, again, these dotted vessels. You might think they, they might be coiled if you look at them closely, but they're essentially dotted vessels, often surrounded by white areas, reticulate depigmentation. And you've got a smudge of pigment just at the edge of this lesion. So dot vessels like this, smudge of pigment, you know, 17-year-old, you certainly needed to come off. But it was a spitz nevus. And here's another one here. Excuse me. <coughs> Here you've got your brown clods as a feature of a spitz nevus, um, with some paler lines around the, the clods, suggestive of a, ne a negative network. This was the lesion. Here, this image is uh, was reported as a spitz-like compound nevus histologically. Uh, it's from the scans blog, courtesy of Alec, uh, Alex Chamberlain. And here's a lesion that I think is part of the spitz nevus spectrum, but it's called a reed nevus. You've got this picture of radial streaking. Here you've got, and it's all round. Uh, here you've got some pseudopods, um, a dense central homogeneous uh, dark area. Sometimes when you, uh, you can use tape stripping to strip off, to tape off, or strip off, I should say, the black lamella that uh, represents all this dark hyperpigmentation. Sometimes you can see a line reticular underneath here. So always consider that for some of these dark uh, nephi. This histologically would have shown um, pigmented spindle cells 
and uh, some pathologists will report that as uh, a reed nevus, others will just report it as a spitz nevus. For instance, this one here, 12 year old I had recently, solitary, rapidly growing lesion on her thigh, looked at it with a dermatoscope to me, this is a spitz nevus uniform uh, clods peripherally, you can see some in the center here too, but the pathologist chose to uh, histologically diagnose it as a reed nevus mainly because of these pigmented spindle cells. You see, when you look at the histology of uh, a spitz nevus, it's like this. You've got a mixture of epithelioid and spindle cells. The more epithelioid, the more they tend to call it a spitz. Here you've also got these clear clefts. These cells don't invade into the epidermis, so there's often a clear cleft be uh, between the nests of cells at the dermoepidermal junction and the epidermis. You've got these pink uh, bodies that are known, pink eosinophilic bodies that are known as camino bodies. Um, there is maturation of the cells as you go down in depth, and there are no deep mitoses. Uh, the nevus cells mature and get smaller as you go down towards the base, but sometimes on high power you can get bizarre multinucleate atypical cells high up here. So uh, this can sometimes be a bit wor worrying, but when you get this combination of factors, um, epithelioid and uh, spindle-shaped cells, clefting, camino bodies, no invasion of the epidermis, maturation with depth, then it's a spitz nevus. So it can be a difficult histological diagnosis in differentiating from melanoma, helped by knowing the patient's age. Okay, that's an overview of spitz nevi. Remember the pink because of the dot vessels. Remember the brown clods. Uh, remember the clods radial peripheral, the maturation of a spitz nevus as with any other nevus with time, and the uh, presence of this rapidly growing lesion between the ages of 2 to 12. Then it tends to make your lesion a spitz nevus. God bless Sophie Spitz. She's given us a lot to think about. Thank you very much.